In this lesson, we shall look at chemical equilibrium, or what sometimes is called chemical equilibria. We will go through the theory and also spend time on past examination questions, and we proceed. Right, understanding chemical equilibrium is very important for examination purposes. So to start with, um, we're often interested in what we call open systems, and uh, also what you call closed systems. Okay, now what is an open system? Right, so in an open system, matter and energy can leave the system, okay? If the system is open, it means that matter and energy can leave the system, but in a closed system, system, matter and energy cannot leave the system. Now for a closed system, a dynamic chemical equilibrium will form when the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. Okay, for a closed system, a dynamic chemical equilibrium will form when the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. Okay, so this offers us an opportunity to define what you call a dynamic chemical equilibrium um, is that which forms when the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. So when we then say the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal, then we have what we call a dynamic chemical equilibrium. There's something called the for a forward reaction. Um, and in a forward reaction, um, reactants uh, change into products. So now we actually obviously have an example where you have, um, for instance, two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. And um, there is a forward reaction, which is in the direction of the blue arrow. And you are able to see that now you have two hydrogen atoms and uh, one oxygen atom there. And now um, the reverse reaction, in, in the what we call the reverse reaction, products change into reactants. So when we go in the direction of the green arrow, the products change into reactants. What are we seeing here? We are seeing that hydrogen and oxygen produce water. They produce H2O, H2O. All right, so they produce um, H2O, meaning that a combination of hydrogen and oxygen produces water. But now reverse reaction um, implies that the products uh, change into reactants, meaning that if you have water, you can be able to break water down. <laughs> Very technical process though. You can be able to break water down into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, not very easy to do that. Okay, but now many chemical reactions are reversible. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Now, a system is a chemical equilibrium. Now, we are looking at what a system is precisely. What is a system? A system is a, is a chemical equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction and reverse reaction are equal. Or a system is in chemical equilibrium. When is a system in chemical equilibrium? When do we have what you call um, the chemical equilibrium? When? When do we have that? Right. So a system is in chemical equilibrium when the rate, rate of the forward reaction and reverse reaction are equal, okay? So we're defining here what you call chemical equilibrium, and that occurs when the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. Okay, we're good. Let's continue right now and see what more we have here and see what more we have here. Okay, um, if you look at the forward reaction, um, the forward reaction is the one that is dotted, and the reverse reaction is solid, solid line. And we have the rate in the vertical axis and the time in the horizontal axis. Okay. Now, um, this is actually what we're seeing. So um, looking at this diagram here, looking at the rates on the vertical axis, we're able to see that the forward reaction is, the, is certainly the broken one. And the reverse reaction um, um, is solid, but also when the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. So now they're equal at this point, 
um, because this is the rate axis, so they are equal at this point, meaning at the time that these converge together, that the rate of the forward and the reverse become equal to each other, then we have vertical chemical um, equilibrium. Let us continue and analyze more concepts. The notion of what you call the concentration of the reactants and products are constant. Okay, let us look at, so now, we're defining chemical equilibrium when the concentration of the products, uh, of the reactants and products are constant. So during what you call a chemical equilibrium, the concentration of the reactants and products are constant, meaning that you can have you have the concentration axis uh, as the vertical axis and the time as the horizontal axis. But what we are seeing is therefore that now the reactants and products will have constant concentrations. So their concentrations are constant. So now, in other words, the concentration of the reactants and the concentration of the products are uh, remain constant. Um, it doesn't mean they are equal to each other, but it means they are constant. So during equilibrium, something happens to the concentration of the reactants, reactants here. So you can see there are the reactants, the reactants now start from the, uh, from the origin and the products start up there. But what we are able to see therefore, that uh, the, um, the concentrations would therefore become constant, meaning that these will go horizontally um quite for some time okay or oh, at least indefinitely okay so we have looked at these the rates and the concentrations okay now it's very important for us to have a very clear understanding of um Le Chatelier's principle Right, so we, it's very important for us to have a clear understanding of what we call Le Chatelier's principle as we learn it, but also in a way that will allow us to understand and also be in a position to, um, to interpret this and use it in the exams. Okay, understanding Le Chatelier's principle. Basically, an equilibrium system will respond to reduce the effect of the change by favoring either the forward or reverse reaction. Okay, let us look at this sentence again. Basically, an equilibrium system will respond to reduce. So your an equilibrium system will respond to reduce the effect of the change. In other words, if there is a change, we are saying the equilibrium will respond to reduce the effect of the change by favoring either, either the forward or reverse reaction. Now, think of Le Chatelier's principle as follows. I think of Le Chatelier's principle, so this one must be principle, please. Right, think of Le Chatelier's principle um, as a seesaw. As a seesaw, you have the rate of the uh, rate of the forward reaction, rate um, of the reverse reaction on this side. We have the reactants here and the products. Okay, so when the reactants themselves, um, for example, the rate of the forward um, reaction and the rate of the um, reverse reaction are equal. Where you have the reactants and the products, therefore there is a there is a balance. So what we call the seesaw is balanced, is balanced. Okay, good, it's balanced. Now, next, let's look at an example of these um, Le Chatelier's principle. Um, now, a factor causes a change to an equilibrium system, increasing the concentration of the of the reactants. Let us look at this now um, and the factor here. So here's a seesaw example where the rate of the forward reaction now um, is actually such that, um, according to this description here, this side is heavier because the reactants increased. So you are then saying increasing the concentration of 
the reactants. So if you increase the concentration of the reactants, you can see that this side is heavier. And if this side is heavier, it means that now the reactants have their concentration um, increased and the products therefore um, would actually somehow have less relative to the former state uh, because now we have just increased the concentration of the reactants. In response, the Ford reaction is favored, decreasing the concentration of the reactants, restoring a new balance. Okay, let's look at these and look at these carefully. <clears throat> right, now we are looking at what happens if we just decide to increase the concentration of the reactants. Of the reactants. Surely if we increase the concentration of the reactants, we can see that this is so is now is not balanced because this side this side is heavier because the reactants because the reactants increased. So the reactants increased. Now, when the reactants then increased, um, um, we have that therefore their concentration increased, the concentration of the reactants increased, and therefore they're sort of heavier. And if they're heavier, then you really can see that this is so is not balanced. So what does Le Chatelier's principle therefore say? In response, the forward reaction is favored. Okay, because you increase the reactants. So according to Le Chatelier's principle, an equilibrium system will respond to reduce the effect of the change by favoring either the forward or reverse reaction. It will respond. Okay, so the, an equilibrium system will respond to reduce the effect of the change by favoring either the forward or reverse reaction. Uh, increasing the contraction of the reactants in this case in response, the forward reaction is favored decreasing the concentration of the reactants, restoring a new balance. Next. Okay, let us speak about KC. Right, let's talk about KC and what KC means here. And what KC means here. Right, what KC means here. Okay, the equilibrium constant is the ratio of products to reactants. What is Kc? It is the ratio of products to reactants. Products to reactants, that is Kc. Okay, that's the definition. If somebody would sort of ask, what, what is Kc? Kc is the ratio of products to reactants. It allows the chemist to determine the progress of a reaction, indicating whether the formation of the reactants or products is being favored. For the chemical reaction at equilibrium, let's look at this chemical reaction at equilibrium. It's just a hypothetical, hypothetical chemical reaction there. Let's see what happens to it um, as we analyze this uh, very, very carefully. Okay, okay, okay. Now there is lowercase a and capital A, and then we have uh, lowercase plus lowercase b, capital B, in the forward and reverse. So the forward and reverse reactions are taking place. And we have lowercase c and, upper, uh, and, and uppercase c plus uh, lowercase d plus uppercase d. Okay, now we have the ratio of the concentration of the products and the reactants, okay? Um, yeah, right, so the ratio of products to reactants. Products themselves, so you'd have therefore that uh, um, the concentration of c to the, um, the concentration of uh, the, um, element or of the of the compound um, compound C to the power lowercase C, the concentration of D to the power, the coefficient D, which occurs when this is balanced, when the chemical equation is balanced, um, divided by the concentration of the reactants. The reactants are the concentration of A to the power A times concentration of B to the power B. There are phases of matter. Right, phases of matter are important. Okay, so because now we speak about the phases of matter, now we do not include all of them in the KC calculation. So which phases do we include in the calculation? Let's take a look. There are pure substances which are liquid or solid, do not have a measurable concentration. Pure substances, which we refer to as liquid or solid, do not have a measurable concentration and are given a value of one in the KC expression. The, this we call home, so yeah, the, the liquids and the solids, we give them concentration of a value of one 
there are the, there's what you call the homogeneous reactions and heterogeneous reactions. So we are speaking about two types of reactions, homogeneous versus heterogeneous, right? Reactants and products are all in the same phase. When we have uh, the, what we call homogeneous reactions, we speak about the same phase. Homo means same, right? So same um, phase. So now the reactants and products are all in the same phase where you have that AA plus BB in the forward and reverse, um, CC, and all of these are in gaseous state. And therefore, I guess this gives us an example of what you call a homogeneous reaction because all of these are gases. Now, let's look at the next one. Looking at the heterogeneous reactions, the reactants and products are not all in the same phase. Okay, so now we have AA plus BB forward and reverse uh, reactions, and you have CC plus DD. But you can see A is in the solid state, B is in the liquid, and uh, C is, is, is a gas, and D is in the aqueous state. Okay, good. It's in the aqueous state. Right, so this is then all right. This is then all right. Okay, we're good. Let's continue. But now, what we're noting here is, okay, A is in the solid and B is in the liquid. So now we have C in the uh, gaseous state and D in aqueous. So now the KC is going to be um, exactly this way, but now we take the concentration of the products um, because Kc is the ratio of products to reactants. Okay, if this is true, then what do we do with this? Right, we note that uh, the liquids, which is this here, and the solid A and the liquid B would obviously be uh, not be included, won't be included in the in the KC there. That is the point you're raising. Um, we continue um, and analyze. Now, this is strong, but very powerful. Only temperature can change KC. <laughs> this is it. Only temperature. What about pressure? What about concentration? What about this? What about that? Only temperature can change KC. This is the claim. So now, if they ask you, will the KC change? So it's only temperature. Only a change in temperature has the power to change KC. The value of KC does not change if a catalyst is added. Somebody can come and say, okay, the examiner, we're going to be looking at a lot of exam questions. I have tons and tons of questions we're going to do today. But... The value of Kc does not change if a catalyst is added. Concentration of reactants on products change or pressure of the system changes. Okay, so now somebody can come and say, what about if we change the concentration of the reactants or products, we say the Kc doesn't change. What about if pressure of the system changes, Kc doesn't change. Okay, what about if a catalyst is added? So we're looking at a catalyst, we're looking at concentration and we're looking at pressure. We're saying all these guys, they don't have the power to change KC. All these factors do not have the power to change the KC, but only temperature can. Okay, let us look at understanding the value of KC. Okay, so now the KC value itself, we can see three parts of the story. Three parts of the story, for example, Kc can be is equal to one. It happens that Kc is one. It happens that Kc is what? Uh, Kc is greater than one or it is less than one. Okay, now we continue. Now we continue. Right, we continue. When Kc is one, the concentration of the reactants and products are about the same. When Kc is 1, it means that the concentration of reactants and products are about the same. That is why it's 1. Because obviously we know that the Kc itself is the ratio of products to reactants. So if the concentration of the products and reactants are equal to each other, then it's like saying a number divided by itself, like 2 divided by 2, it would just be 
to just be one. Okay, when, when does when is the case greater than one? Because sometimes it's greater than one, this case C. When we do that, like so isn't yes. it one when it's isn't it one when it's um solid or liquid? <laughs> yes. Yes, the concentration. Um yeah, obviously when it's solid or liquid, it's one. Um, um obviously because um as I said here, like the pure substances which are liquid or solid. Do not have a measurable, uh, a measurable concentration and are given a value of one. So the individual, the individual concentration, like the concentration of a solid, like the concentration of what is the concentration of A here? Um, we would actually we don't include it because we just say uh, one because it's a, it's a solid. So the individual concentrations we put them as one. Uh, they are so yes, I agree with you. So obviously. Um, if we're dealing with solids, then you would be dividing um, the products and reactants which are in solid. So it's going to be one, 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 one. Okay. But we can have a, a case where there is a solid, but not only a solid and a liquid. Okay. For example, let's look at this. <laughs> All right. So you can have, um, when would this construction be one um, in the heterogeneous uh, reaction case, for example? So you'd have that um, this, the A is a solid, so its construction is one, and the B is a liquid, construction is one. And then now, meaning that you are saying construction of products of a reactants, the reactants in the denominator will have construction of one. The denominator will have construction of one. So obviously, if the denominator is construction of one, well, we expect the products also in this case because of the products and directions. Um, so these guys will have construction of one, but the products we don't know. Meaning it can be anything. Okay, it can be uh, greater than one. It can be equal to one if they're equal. Uh, or it can be more than one. Okay, but um, my point is, we would say uh, at this point, uh, the concentration of A is a solid is one. And the concentration of B, we are sure, because it's a liquid, it's one as well. Okay, so that's what we're saying. All right, yeah, we're going to look at it more in detail um, as we look at the, uh, at the exam questions. But yeah, just... Take note of that at the moment. It's very, very interesting. Okay, let us um, analyze this. Yes, I was saying that. Yes, um, we can have that the concentration is uh, the concentration itself is one. Like the KC, excuse me, the KC is one when you are dealing with solids or liquids. But moreover, we are able to say. Right, we're able to say that um, it can be one in other cases as well. Um, it can be one in other cases, but in the so when dealing with solids and liquids, you are hundred percent sure that it's it's going to be one. Okay, but when is the case bigger than one? So we are saying concentration of reactants and products are about the same. So they can be about the same even if we are dealing with gases or we are dealing with um, aqueous substances or substances in the aqueous state. Right, so. When is the case thing bigger than one? The concentration of products are higher than reactants. Okay, yeah, because this is make this makes sense. Because when the concentration of the products, when the numerator is bigger, you are dividing the, you are dealing with the case thing calculation, and you have that denominator. The numerator is bigger, two divided by one. It's two, so this is bigger than one, and that would be true when the concentration of the products. Concentration of the products um, is certainly bigger than the concentration of the reactants. When that happens, uh, we have uh, uh, we have that the um, we have that the case is bigger than one. Okay, we have that the case C is bigger than one. When is the case is smaller than one? When the concentration of the products are higher than of the reactants are higher than products. Okay, so yeah. So in other words, uh, this would be that uh, we're dealing with case C. And dealing with the case C now, we're looking at this particular concentration of the products um, divided by concentration of the reactants. 
So we're dealing with concentration of the products and we're dividing with the concentration of the reactants. Um, right, so if we are saying therefore now the country, the KC is smaller than one, that would mean therefore that uh, you are having that the product, the concentration of the products is much less than the concentration of the reactants. So that the, the, the reactants have a greater concentration, you know, because if they have a greater concentration, maybe this one is two, and then the reactants will have a greater concentration, maybe three, okay. Right, or now we have two and then maybe four there, okay. And the two or four is like a 0 0.5, for example, which is like one half of this one. So yeah, you'll be able to see that it is the one half is smaller than one, meaning that after the case is more than one, with the concentration of the reactants, um, concentrations of the reactants are higher than products. Right, so you can even put S here to mean concentrations of reactants and products are both the same. Concentrations of products are higher than reactants concentrations of reactants are higher than products. So obviously if the concentration of reactants are higher than products, okay, so your denominator is bigger. If the denominator is bigger, like two over four, or like two over three, the bigger denominator, then the answer is gonna be zero point something. So which is more than, smaller than one. Ensure you know how to calculate the concentration or um, the concentration and moles, okay? These ones, we need to remember them. That concentration is number of moles of a volume. And the concentration, for instance, is measured in moles per decimeter cubed. But also I need to remember, so concentration and moles, how do we find the moles, <laughs> okay? Right, it's mass over molar mass. Right, it's mass over molar mass. So the, it's the mass in grams divided by molar mass in grams per mole. So, um, and the N is the number of moles. Uh, number of moles is denoted by lowercase symbol N. We good, we good. Now let us continue. Let's look at more things. Okay, calculating KC and why is it important to calculate KC now? Ensure you are able to do the following three steps in a KC calculation problem. Right, now, step up your KC expression. Check the phases of your reactants and products. Write your KC expression. Okay, so we are, you need to actually um sort of set up right so if you need to set up your kc expression um you need to check the phases of your reactants and products right and and be in a position to write um your kc expression there okay so this is something that is very important use an equilibrium table Okay, now very often we would be interested in using a equilibrium table. So the rise, the rise um, notation and um, scheme, you need to be able to draw an equilibrium table. Uh, obviously, in our hypothetical example case, you have the A and the B as the reactants and the C and the D as the product. Okay, we're dealing with, for instance, the A is um is a gas and the B is a gas and C is a gas and D is aqueous. The mole ratio as per balanced chemical equation, right? So, yeah, the 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 ratio, and we're looking at the mole ratio as per balanced chemical equation. So we're looking at the mole ratio when we're having a balanced chemical equation. Initial, the I in the rise is, uh, represents initial, where we're saying starting amount in moles of a reagent present at the beginning. Okay. Change C. So, sir, yes. This can happen for, for solids. 
and liquids. Yes, this is not uh, for solids and liquids, and it is for the um, gases and aqueous substances. Okay, good point there. Excellent uh, there, Noah. Right, so now there's a change in reactants or products based on the mole ratio. So, yeah, based on the mole ratio, there's going to be some potential change in reactants or products based on mole ratio. Equilibrium, E, stands for equilibrium, amount of reactant or product present at equilibrium. The E stands for equilibrium, but we're looking for the amount um, of reactant or product present at equilibrium. There's equilibrium again, with the concentration of reactant or product at equilibrium. We're looking for the amount, the amount, the phase E is for the amount, of reactant present at equilibrium and the second E for equilibrium at equilibrium we're looking for the concentration. Why? Because the concentration is the ultimate. The amount which is normally in, in, in the number of moles, etc., um can obviously be um and um can obviously be determined. But in the end we for KC we need the concentrations because only the concentrations work in KC calculations. Okay, we want to set up, we're setting up, set up you, the KC there. Okay, let's just continue and analyze these cautiously and very, very carefully. Substitute into your KC expression, substitute into your KC uh, equation from step one. Okay, let us uh, look at these and uh, now this is uh, very, very important and now we have a chance to discuss this. Okay, let's look at uh, the question um, um, that was said recently and we're, we're going to look at a lot of tons of past examination questions and uh, we have a fair chance to practice together and see how well we can do the, the, the past questions. Let us look at this question. Question six. Right, one mole of pure um, hydrogen iodide gas, HI gas, is sealed in a one decimeter cubed container. Okay, in a one cubic decimeter container. Now, let us analyze this. Right, at 721 Kelvin temperature, Equilibrium is reached according to the following balanced equation. So now you have that your hydrogen iodide gas, HI gas, um, is sealed in that amount of volume, one cubic decimeter container, at that temperature of 721 Kelvin. Okay, now let us analyze this together and see what happens. Hydrogen iodide now breaks down into hydrogen and iodine. Okay. At equilibrium. And, and this is balanced. Why? Because you have two hydrogen atoms. You have two iodine atoms. And obviously, you also have two iodine, two hydrogen on the left. So, yeah, it's all good and well. It's all very, very good and well. Let us see what we have then over here. We continue uh, together um, to analyze this particular question. Okay. And the first question is clear. And the first question says, state, state Le Chatelier's principle. State Le Chatelier's principle. Let us state Le Chatelier's principle here. So we then say in the statement of Le Chatelier's principle, we say when the equilibrium, when the equilibrium, right? When the equilibrium in a closed system, right? When the equilibrium in a closed system, is disturbed, okay, is disturbed, right, let us see what we have, is disturbed, the system, the system will, right, 
reinstate reinstate a new equilibrium okay we reinstate a new equilibrium We is reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring by favoring the reaction that will that will cancel Or oppose the disturbance. When the equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, the system will reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring the reaction that will cancel or oppose the disturbance. And this is called um, Le Chatelier's principle. It's called Le Chatelier's principle. Next question. In the next question, they're saying, determine the number of moles of each of the following at equilibrium when we are dealing with, for instance, the hydrogen gas and also your um, hydrogen iodide gas. Right, so in the next question then, we are looking at the number of moles um, of the following at equilibrium. So what will be the number of moles of hydrogen be at equilibrium? So we are dealing with the number of moles of the hydrogen gas at equilibrium. Okay. It is found that 0 0.11 moles of iodine are present at equilibrium. So we are saying um, for iodine is 0 0.11 moles. Okay, so that in the end, then what you then have is for this one is 0 0.11 moles. Uh, 0 0.11 moles. 0 0.11 moles. Sorry. So, and, and you can just write uh, like normally we just write 0 0.11 mole there. Okay, why? Because these are in the ratio 1 is to 1. Okay, they're in the ratio 1 is to 1, so we're able to see therefore at equilibrium the hydrogen, uh, the, you know, the ratio is 2 is to 1 is to 1. So, 2 is to 1 is to 1, so that now if you're looking for the number of moles of hydrogen iodide, uh, of rather hydrogen alone, um, it would be obviously, it, it's in the same ratio as the, as the iodine, um, 1 is to 1. So now if this iodine is actually having um number of moles of 0 0.11, it means hydrogen also has 0 0.11 there. Next question. Okay, so yes. moles at equilibrium means... The the real number of moles. Yes, moles at equilibrium recreated. Yeah, definitely. Um, mean the real. Um, and then um, the change, yes. the change in moles. What does that one? Because those yeah. are the ones that are used. Right? Okay. Yeah, definitely. No. Yeah, the, yeah, definitely. We are yet to analyze the changes. Um, because obviously now because change change means used up. Yes, but, change means used up, yeah. So is it going to be a different value from 0 0.11? Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be different from the 0 0.11. Okay, yeah, but so we're going to like, yeah, calculate. Can you explain the difference between, between yeah. the moles at equilibrium and the change? And the change, the yeah, the, the, the used difference? up ones. Yeah, definitely. We're going to do, we're going to do an example. Okay, in particular, in this question, we're going to see they're going to be used ones, and we shall discuss um, when you get to that part of the question. But yeah, we're going to discuss the used 
so that we can be able to know um, the number of moles at equilibrium exactly, which is sort of be the balance um, when we subtract the used. Um, but we're going to discuss that when um, we get to the question, particularly the examiner would either calculate the used or the used is given, you know? Yeah, but yeah, we shall discuss that with a clear example. Right, in 6.2.2, let us look at 6.2.2. 6.2.2, yes. Now, in 6.2.2, it's sort of when we get to that part of the question. Um, it's what we're asking now. To then say, now, if we determine number of moles of each of the following at equilibrium, hydrogen iodide. Okay, we've already said hydrogen iodide. So you have the ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1. Okay. <clears throat> right. Two moles of hydrogen iodide would be... Um, Two moles of hydrogen iodide are in the ratio of um, two is to one is to one. Okay, two is to one is to one. Okay, so um, at this point, we need to determine number of moles of each of the following at equilibrium. Now, this is what you are asking and we're discussing it now. We are then saying if you have the used and so on, how do we filter all that in? So let us find we are interested in the number of moles of each of the following at equilibrium. Number of moles of, um, for instance, your hydrogen iodide used, how much would be, would the number of moles of hydrogen iodide used in this question? Let's just find that. Okay, and then so that you can be able to know at equilibrium, we find the difference. So now the number of moles of hydrogen iodide used would become what? Okay, so it is found that 0 0.11 moles of hydrogen iodide are present at equilibrium with 0 0.11 of, of, of rather iodine, iodine um, that are present. Okay, now. The ratio, if this one is iodine is 0 0.11, and also this one in the ratio of um, um, 1 is to 1, so uh, this one here would have to be double that. Okay, so, so that now the used hydrogen iodide would therefore be um, two times the number of moles of um, iodine. So the number of moles of hydrogen iodide would therefore be it's two times that of iodine because they gave us iodine, which means that it's two times 0 0.11. And then this guy here is actually 0 0.22. Let's look at the number of moles of hydrogen iodide at equilibrium. Okay. Remember that now we need the number of moles at equilibrium. All right. So if we need the number of moles of hydrogen iodide at equilibrium, we then proceed to find that out. So it's going to be what then exactly happens. So we then have to say, because you're told one mole of pure hydrogen iodide gas, Right, so you dealt with, in the beginning, initially, you had one mole of hydrogen iodide and used up were 0 0.22 of hydrogen iodide. And then the difference here is actually exactly 0 0.78 moles. 0 0.78 moles. So the moles at equilibrium are the moles that were used. Okay, the moles at equilibrium. Okay, that, that's a good question. It's, it's it's no no sorry not used. It's the yes. the ones that are left. The the ones that are left. Well done. The ones oh, that are left. Okay. I agree with you. The ones that are left because we have, we subtracted the ones that are used, and then we got the ones that are left. So these are the number of moles at equilibrium. The ones that are left after subtracting the used ones. Well done. Okay, good. So yeah, we have just that kind of an example, but there are tons of examples that I hear past exam questions. Okay, this this question was set in June. 
um, June 2023. Okay, this is the June 2023 exam uh, question uh, there. So, yeah, just take note of that. Let's look at the next question. Right, so now we're looking at what happens in 6.3 of this June um, paper of last year, 2023. Okay, still one mole. Right, still one mole of hydrogen iodide gas is sealed in a one cubic decimeter container at 721 Kelvin. Equilibrium is reached according to the following balanced equation. Okay, we saw that. Here is the, the next question now, because we've already done up to the 6.2, and then we're looking at 6.3, yes? The equilibrium constant, which is uh, what you call the KC at 721 Kelvin temperature is 0, 0,02. Okay, the case is given. The temperature of the container is now increased. Okay, we change the temperature and we've just said temperature is the only thing that changes KC, the KC value. But now the examiner increases it to 850 Kelvin from 720 Kelvin, the initial temperature. The equilibrium constant KC at 850 Kelvin is um 0, 0.09 what has happened to the kc because at 721 it was 0, 0.02 850 it is um 0, 0.09 and we know that kc is uh, the um the concentration of the products Right, and we divide that by the concentration of the reactants. Like so, I mean, we just discussed that. So we have that Kc becomes the product divided by the concentration of, of the reactants. Okay, concentration of the products, concentration of the reactants. Something that we just discussed um um obviously over over here the product contraction of the products divided by the reactants the reactants are sit are sitting in the denominator okay so we awesome we awesome now let's look at these here so if this kc has now increased to 0, 0.09 is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic? Because if the KC has increased, what does it mean? The KC is now bigger. For this KC to become bigger, it means that the numerator must become bigger. It means that the numerator must become bigger. The denominator must a little bit become smaller, at least. Or... The numerator can become bigger and the denominator remains fixed. Okay, but uh, one possibility is therefore that because this is um, um, a reaction that is obviously at equilibrium and therefore we expect that now if there is a change, which is the increase in temperature, um, when the concentration of the products um, increase, or increase the, yeah, the concentrations of the products increase those of the, re the the reactants the concentration in this case of the reactant will somehow decrease there okay in other words it means therefore the forward reaction the forward reaction itself okay we are yet to explain we have to explain but now if because they're saying fully explain your answer, so we shall do that in the next question. But obviously, is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic? Well, you're able to see, therefore, that the forward reaction is endothermic. The forward reaction is endothermic. So if you increase the temperature and the Kc now increases from 0, 0,02, because the 0, 0,02 is 721 Kelvin. At 850 Kelvin, it is 0, 0,09.
the, the case has increased with the increase in temperature that happens um so at, at um when the temperature increases um, we actually are seeing that the Kc also increases, and this happens in an endothermic reaction. Okay, can you have better ways to, or even more ways to explain that part? But let us look at the next question. So now, then the question is that, why is this? Because in 6.3.2, the examiner is saying, fully explain the answer to question 6.3.1. Explain it. Why? Why are we saying if the temperature increases and the Kc increases, then the, the kind of reaction we're dealing with, the forward reaction, the forward reaction is endothermic. Why is that the case? Why? The examiner is saying, so we're going to explain that part. And here's the explanation. So the to explain that, we're going to say that Kc increased. Kc increased. Okay, because the Kc increased, you can write here and say Kc increased. Right, because Kc increased, what does it mean? The concentration. The concentration of the product. Um... The concentration of the product, be it um, hydrogen, gas, and iodine, gas is increased. Right, it's increased. Okay, we're going to analyze what that means um, in a little bit. Let me just uh, explain here. So the concentration of the product, be it um, um, hydrogen and iodine, is increased. Okay, we're going to analyze once again what that means. Next, um, we actually can say, or we can say the concentration is what I was saying, the concentration the concentration of the reactant of the reactant, the reactant being the hydrogen iodide gas decreases. Okay, so um, we note that the increase in temperature, because the temperature increases from 721 Kelvin to 850 Kelvin, so the increase in, in, uh, in temperature, the increase in temperature, favors, favors the forward reaction. favors the forward reaction okay so we can see that the increase in temperature favors the forward reaction why because the kc increases okay let's say more one more point that is very important is actually the fact that what does the Chatelier's principle um, say here? According to Le Chatelier, according to Le Chatelier, um, all right, according to Le Chatelier, This principle, an increase, an increase in temperature favors 
the endothermic reaction. Okay. Okay, let's look at that. So we continue. We continue. Right, so what does this mean? Okay. Now we are really saying here, um, we had to fully explain the answer in terms of, we suggested that the, the increase in temperature that means, or that brings about um, an increase in the KC has its own implications. The temperature increased from 721 Kelvin to 850 Kelvin. That, way, that, that is what the temperature increased by. And the KC um, increased from 0 0.02 to 0 0.09. And we're saying that if that happens to the KC, an increase in temperature favors in, an increase in the KC, it happens only if the forward reaction is endothermic. Okay, that we saw. But here are the explanations for that. So first point of actually um, that we need to note is that KC increased. Okay, from 0 0.02 to 0 0.09, the concentration of the product bid hydrogen gas and iodine is increased. Right. So, moreover, or the concentration of the reactant, um, hydrogen iodide decreases. So, you can even say here the concentrations. Um, you can use the concentrations of the products um, are increased. So you can use the fact that the concentrations of the products with hydrogen iodine are, are actually increased, or the concentration of the reactor, the, yeah, the concentration of the reactant hydrogen iodide decreases. The increase in temperature favors the forward reaction. Yeah, we, can, we saw that when the temperature increases, it favors the forward reaction. How do we know it favors the forward reaction? Because the Kc increased. How does an increase in Kc show? Um, because we know that uh, this is a concentration of the products. Kc is concentration of the products divided by concentration of the reactants. Right, concentration of the products divided by concentration of the reactants. So, this is what we have. So, when the case increases, it means the concentration of the products, um, concentration of the products um, um, increased, and the concentrations um, of the reactants decreased. So, the increase in temperature favors the forward reaction. How does it favor the forward reaction? Because the Kc increase, and Kc increase means the products became larger in concentration, and uh, it means therefore for them to become larger, the products in concentration, it means that the, the forward reaction was favored. And uh, yeah, okay, there's more we can always say there. Right, according to Le Chatelier's principle, an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction. According to Le Chatelier's principle, um, an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction. Okay, because when the temperature increases, the reaction will tend to do what? According to Le Chatelier's principle, when the temperature increases, the tendency of the reaction to counter that and to reduce the temperature would happen. And therefore, it means that the forward reaction itself 
um, or the endothermic reaction is favored. Why? Because the endothermic reaction is a kind of reaction that requires heat to go on. So what it does is if you increase the temperature, then the reaction that is that absorbs the heat um, is what is favored. If you increase the temperature, then it absorbs the heat because then if it absorbs the heat, then it's able to, to, to go on, to proceed. Okay, let us continue. So this is the explanation. All these things are the explanation to question 6.3.2. That is the question we're discussing. Okay, let us look at the next one. Now for eight marks, let's calculate our KC here. Let's calculate our KC for eight marks. Calculate the mass of hydrogen iodide present at the new equilibrium at 850 Kelvin. So now we have two KC values, 0 0.02 at 721 Kelvin and 0 0.09 at 850 Kelvin. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so all right, so continue. Let's look at yeah, we're looking at um question six point three point three. Yeah, made no space available for it. Let's uh, do the calculation here um and see what we have in six point three point three. Right, so in 6.3.3 now, we're going to look at the fact that this is the balanced chemical equation following the balanced equation. So this is already balanced. How do we know it's balanced? It is balanced because we're able to see the, the, the fact that we have two hydrogen atoms, two uh, iodine atoms, and two hydrogen iodide atoms, the Kc. Okay, concentration of hydrogen. Okay, uh, Okay. yeah, we're taking the products and hydrogen, and then we also have our iodine, and we divide by the hydrogen iodide gas. We square this because of the number of moles of the... Um, um, of the hydrogen iodide, too. So don't you have to draw the table? Okay, yeah, we can always sketch the table. Right, you can always sketch the table. For example, if you look at the fact that you have the hydrogen iodide gas and you have your hydrogen gas and you have your, your iodine there, the couple of things that we saw, because uh, one mole of pure hydrogen iodide is sealed in that um, in one cubic decimeter container at seven hundred and twenty-one Kelvin. Okay, and obviously we know that this was uh, the number of moles uh, that was present in the beginning, and uh, when that number of moles was present in the beginning, what then happened was that we actually um, did not quite have anything else. So you had one mole here in the beginning when these were not, not at all present in the beginning. So this was initially the case. Right. And then obviously we actually were able to make a couple of observations and do a couple of changes. And we discussed a couple of changes. And so what then changes to, did we actually therefore get to discuss um, at this point? I want us to discuss that fact. Okay, we are able to see because there are two states here. 
Um, we saw that there was a change, right? So when we have our reaction there, and how much therefore was the change? We're looking at the rise. Right, so if if obviously this is our reaction and initial and the change, and we're looking at the rise. Okay, obviously there are two equilibrium values in this question, so it's something you need to take note of. But I'm gonna mention what happened in the first case. So the change was, okay, it is found that 0 0.11 moles of hydrogen iodide are present at equilibrium. Okay, we're dealing with the 721 Kelvin. So now at that temperature, we had 0 0.11 present. So we saw that it's going to be 0 0.11 here, and then the change is going to be 0 0.11 here, and the change is going to be two times that, which is 0 0.22. Right. And obviously, this 0 0.22 is, is two times 0 0.11. Okay. Um, we analyze that. We continue. Right, we can draw the table this way. And uh, we can um, draw some rows here. Okay, this is not very tidy, but you should forgive me there. And then now you'd have the change uh, as well. Okay, this is at the first equilibrium. There are two of them. There are two temperatures there. And now at each, each temperature has its own Kc. Now then the, okay, let's look at then what happens at equilibrium. The amounts at equilibrium. What were the amounts at equilibrium? So we saw that initially there was one. So you'd have the full that uh, at this point then at equilibrium, you then had one minus 0 0.22, which, which became 0 0.78. Zero comma seven eight. Zero comma seven eight. Okay, let's continue. So now Let's look at what, what then happens, because it's found that these are present at equilibrium. So uh, obviously, I mean, what is being noted um, will therefore be the fact that you would have the 0, 0,11. But now let's take a look at what happens here. And this happens at what temperature? At 0, um at, at rather at 721 Kelvin temperature. Okay, now the is another temperature 850 Kelvin. All right, at the temperature of 850 Kelvin, let us analyze together. And obviously we're gonna have a new KC and we need to record data for that part. The temperature is therefore increased, and we are then saying then the um, the concentrations, therefore, somewhat changed. So let us analyze together and look at what the concentrations were. What were the concentrations? Right, so I'm going to look at the concentrations here. Right, so if the concentrations themselves become number of moles over volume, so you'd have 0, 0.78 divided by 1, which is 0, 0.78. 0, 0,11 divided by 1, 0, 0,11. Okay, these are concentrations, all of them. Yeah, at 721 Kelvin, and also here you'd have 0, 0,11 divided. Okay, because the, the is concentration equals number of moles of a volume, but the volume is 1. 
one cubic decimeter and divide the number of moles by the by the what by the volume of one so it is just 0 0.11 now this table therefore is increased is extended when we're then saying the temperature then increased then there's going to be a new extension so there is a new equilibrium okay Okay, two hydrogen iodide, gas, iodine. Okay, so okay, let's look. Um, this one is going to have a uh, there's going to be concentrations. So this is the equilibrium concentration. Equilibrium amount in moles, equilibrium concentration. So it's the rise. Um, and then now, yeah. So yeah, the two equilibrium. So this is the equilibrium concentration and this is the equilibrium number of moles. And then here, there's going to be a new equilibrium. There's going to be sort of a new equilibrium. Let's look at the new equilibrium. Okay. Right. When we have the new equilibrium, it means therefore that now the concentration of the. Okay. We saw that the products, the KC increased, and therefore, because the KC increased, it was a good sign that. In the new equilibrium, you'd have 0, 0,11. So what will be the new concentrations now? And that is sort of the discussion we're having. Okay. So this one is going to be 0, 0,11 plus X. 0, 0,11 plus X. Okay. This one is going to be 0, 7, 8 minus 2x. Okay. Because now, because of the 2 here, because of the 2 here. So this one is going to be, obviously, the equilibrium concentration is 0, 0, 0,78 at temperature 721 Kelvin. And then this one is at 850 Kelvin temperature. And then now the concentration of, uh, of the concentrations of the reactor, of the product. So this, this, this the, the first table is for the... Um... Seven the original is the original oh, table. The original yes, yes. Okay. yeah, is the original table at 721 Kelvin. And then now there's gonna be another table when you have like 850 Kelvin temperature. So the the reactants are gonna be higher. That's why you said plus X. Yes, because then the products, the products, because the KC okay, uh, yeah, the KC is, is now higher. It means because mm -hmm. the, the KC is now higher. How is it higher? Because 0, 0.09 before it was 0, 0.02. So it means the concentrations of the products, the products on the right would increase those concentrations. And we got the concentrations. What were they? There was 0, 0.11, 0, 0.11 of the products, and then 0, 0.78, um, the concentration of the reactant here. But of the products are going to be higher because the KC became higher. So we say plus X, plus X. Why plus X? Because there's a one here one here in principle you can say plus one x plus one x and then here this one because it's 0 0.78 we then say minus two x okay so as i said you can say 0 0.11 plus one x 0 0.11 plus excuse me one x okay is equal to the bottom one 0, 0,11 plus x, 0, 0,11 plus x. Okay, the 0, 0,78 we minus 2x because why? Because when the right increases, the left decreases. It's not that they're gonna both increase. Okay, because the right increases, therefore the left decreases because the left is being used up when the other one is increasing. That is what is happening. Um, 
so the increase comes from somewhere. The, the right increases because something is losing. The left is losing for the right to gain. So that is what happens. Let's continue right now. So in principle, then, what does this mean? It means that when we have the new equilibrium, we have the following. Okay, we have the same sort of equation here. We have a hydrogen iodide, two moles of it. And, okay, but you see, if we say two moles of hydrogen iodide, we don't mean, these are just relative number of moles, okay? Sometimes we say two moles of hydrogen iodide, one mole of hydrogen, one mole of um. Iodine it doesn't mean that it's actually what it's a really those are relative moles because two is to one is to one and these become the moles. Two is to one is to one, those are the moles. But doesn't mean because we know very well that a hydrogen iodide does not have two moles, it has one mole of in the beginning, for example. And this one's at, at equilibrium, they had 0, 0,1, 0, 0,1, but the ratio is one is to one. So normally when you read here, and when the chemistry teachers read and the students, they say one mole of this, one mole of that, but doesn't mean you're dealing with one mole in, in, in the calculations. Okay, so the value substitute there uh, obviously are different. So I'm looking, we're looking at this one. Okay, I'm looking at the new equilibrium. And then, um, okay, we then said at equilibrium, at the new equilibrium, there's going to be 0, 0,11 plus one times x, 0, 0,11. The 0, 0,11 is from the previous 721 Kelvin um, concentrations. And then we had 0, 0,78, and then we minus 2x. Okay, with this, then we are able to, we're able to um, continue and, and solve this. And so now we have the new equilibrium with the um, equilibrium concentrations. It's the rice, we did it, sure, okay, messy, but yeah, we did the rice together there. All right, let's just uh, do the thing, calculate. Okay, now let's do a calculation. Sorry, we are right back and we have a KC, concentration of the products. We divide by the reactants. The reactants, okay. Where's KC of the products? What are the products? The products are these ones because they increased. Why? The, the, the products increased because the KC increased. Okay. So we have the products which should be, okay. Yeah. Let's write it nicely. Let's write it nicely. So to write it nicely, we're going to use this uh, balanced chemical equation and then write H2 gas and then I2 gas and then divided by a hydrogen iodide gas, but yeah, this one is squared. What is our KC? Okay, so our KC, okay, what is the hydrogen iodide? So this one here is 0, 0,11 plus X, 0, 0,11 plus X. We divide everything by the hydrogen. Okay, yeah, this is hydrogen and iodine. And then I have the hydrogen iodide. This one is 0, 0,78 minus 2x. Uh, we square it. Why do we square it? Well, we square it because of the 2 here. Okay, we're good. Now let's see what, what else we're getting. Right, so we're good. And we get this one. <laughs> okay. Remember that these things are happening at at the new temperature of uh, the new temperature. That's when we have a new equilibrium, and we need to calculate the uh, hydrogen iodide present at the new equilibrium. So we're calculating the Kc at eight fifty. Normally, the examiner will say Kc at what? Okay, so um, we're, we're calculating Kc at eight fifty, but at eight fifty Kelvin, the um, the Kc is. 0, 0,09. Okay, we're dealing with KC at 8.50. This is a quadratic equation we need to solve. We need to solve. Okay, I know that this is it's a messy task. So if we say 0, 0, 0, 0,09, right, so 0, 0,09 is equal to 
0, 1, 1 plus x plus x. Okay, and then we divide everything by the denominator. We had 0, 0.78 that was reduced because uh, when the products when the react when the products gain a lot, the reactants lose. That's why you have the minus two. Okay, now let's do this 0, 0.09. Okay, I'm gonna just to obviously indicate this just so, so that you can get an idea of what's happening. 0, 0.11 times 0, 0.11. Okay, and then everything else, what do we do here? We can cross multiply if we want. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the nicer way to do it. 0, 0.09 and with 0, 0.78 minus 2x and we square this. And it's 0, 0.11, you can write this one as a perfect square like this. Right, this is a quadratic equation. So it is 0, 0.09. And then we square this, we square that, which is 0, 0.78 squared. Let me just launch a calculator so that we can just have fun a little bit and just show how this thing is done. And then, um, right, for example, we just need to do some, a couple of calculations. Okay, we're saying 0, 0.78, we square it, so 0, 0.78 squared, which is this one. Is zero comma six one. Okay, let us write this one is zero comma six one. So it is zero comma six one. Okay, we're squaring this one minus these times two minus two times two. It's minus four times zero comma seven eight. Try to be a little bit faster to do this one here. Okay, let's just do it. Okay, this exam was, was June, uh, right? So it's 0, 0.78 times 2 times 2. 0, 0.78 times minus 2 times 2. Okay, the minus, I've not put it in, on people, in purpose, but which is 3,12. So it's 3,12x negative. 3 comma 1 2 x plus then you square this one which is going to be plus 4 x squared is equal to okay we need to square this guy also ah uh, okay let's launch the calculator again i'm going to finish this quickly okay the next thing is obviously we need to deal with this one let's just square this out to square this out, you need to say 0, 0,11 times itself. Okay. 0, 0,01. 0, 0,01. Okay. So you'd have 0, 0, did you say? Did you say? You said zero comma zero one. Yeah. You said zero comma zero one. Yep. Okay. For this one, then two times this. Zero comma two two x plus x squared. Okay. That is uh. But I have a little bit of fun just doing this KC calculation, then we have to get another exam paper. Okay, now let us look at this one. 0, 0,09 times 0, 0,61. Okay, which is 0, 0,05x. Can write it like that more accurate 0, 0,055. 0, 0,055. 0, 0,055. Okay, taking just one more to small place. Um minus 0, 0,09 times 3, 12. Let's check.
zero comma zero nine times three comma one two zero comma two eight zero comma two eight x zero comma zero nine by four Okay. Zero comma zero nine by four. Zero comma three six. Zero comma three six. Zero comma three six x squared, which is zero comma zero one plus zero comma um. Zero comma two two x plus x squared. Okay, now let us do these quickly. So we're gonna say, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time there. So it's x squared minus zero comma three six. Right, so if we then say minus one, yeah, zero comma six four, zero comma six four x squared, which is this guy, uh, okay, zero comma two two plus zero comma two eight. Zero comma two two plus zero point two eight, which is zero point five zero. Um, X, okay, this one together with this one, zero comma zero one. Okay, <laughs> okay, we shall just finish this part. Okay, just doing some algebra here. Okay, um, so we have zero comma zero one, and then we we minus zero point zero double five minus zero comma zero four five. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Minus zero comma zero. Is it like that? Okay, just uh, checking there. Minus zero comma zero four five. Okay, and this equals zero. Now, um, this is what we we got, and then it's a quadratic. So x is minus b plus or minus the square root for a c over 2a. 0, 0,050. 0, 0, 0,50, you square it. a is 0, 0,64. Let's write here. X equals uh, minus zero comma five zero plus or minus the square root. Okay, plus or minus the square root of the B zero comma five zero you square minus four A zero comma six four. The C is uh, uh, minus zero comma zero four five divided by twice a, which is zero comma six four. Okay, now let us quickly um, do this one. Um, okay, 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 okay. Now. Let's just do everything under the square root. 
Okay, under the square root, we have 0 0.5 squared minus four times 0 0.64 times uh, negative 0 0.045. Zero point three six five two. Zero point three six five two. Okay. Um zero point three six five two square root divided by Um, that word, which would be um, the two times 0 0.34, uh, 0 0.64. Okay, we are we're going to finish this calculation, please. Um, you don't need to. You don't need a lot of writing here, ordinarily. So it's 0 0.3652, and then you take the square root of the answer. Okay, which would be 0. 604. 0 0.604, you divide by, okay, it's not just two here, please. It is something. Two times 0 0.64, and we just need to, yeah, okay. Um, so you're spending a lot of time doing algebra two by 0 0.64. Right, which is 1.28 in the denominator. So this one is going to be exactly 1.28. Okay, 1.28 also here. 1.28, 1.28. Okay, so we can have negative, negative, but we're dealing with concentration, so we shall, we shall only take the positive so that our x is the same as, let's just do it quickly. Um, okay, so if we do this, we're going to have this, and we're going to have the minus 0 0.50 plus 0 0.6, okay, 1.28. Okay, mm -hmm. we're taking only the plus because the other one is going to be negative concentration. We don't want it. Right, so it is 0. Point... Okay, let's check this one. 0. 0.08. 0. 0.08. Uh, right, which is 0. 0.08. Yeah, that's fine. So we're there forgetting 0 0.08. Okay, so it is 0 0.08, and that is what we're getting. But remember that we're dealing with this one, and this one was at the new equilibrium. It was it was 0 0.11 plus. Okay, we remember that one. It was 0 0.11 plus x. 0 0.11 plus x, and this one was. 0 0.78 minus 2x. Right, so if we get the x, then we're interested in the, we need to calculate the mass of the hydrogen iodide present at the new equilibrium. But now, something that um, remains extremely important for us is to then say, what will this be? Okay, we need the concentration here. We need the concentration of this. So you can write like this. This is very, very standard. We need the concentration of the hydrogen iodide at equilibrium, which is 0 0.78 minus 2 times the x we've already got 
Okay, this x is 0 0.78, but if you do it, uh, there's a more accurate result, which is 0 0.0775. If you take like more decimal places. Okay, so I'm gonna use this more accurate one uh, because yeah, this one is rounded off. Okay, now, therefore, for this hydrogen iodide, therefore you'd have the 0 0.78 minus two, uh, two times 0, 0.0775. Okay, if you use a calculator, then whatever you're getting is 0 0.63. 0 0.63 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay. So now, what is the... Okay. This is the equilibrium concentration of a hydrogen iodide at equilibrium. It is 0 0.63. But we don't want just these. We want the mass. So we have got the concentration of a hydrogen iodide at equilibrium. And it is actually 0 0.63 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, we want the mass. But we know therefore that at this point, concentration is number of moles over volume. That's the formula. We want the number of moles um, to find the mass. So we cross multiply here so that the number of moles uh, of hydrogen iodide would therefore be the same as CV, cross multiply N equals CV. The concentration is this one of hydrogen iodide, which is 0 0.63. And the, um, the volume is one. Um, so you have one cubic decimeter. Therefore, this is 0 0.63, um, the number of moles. It is the, when you write the mole. Okay. But uh, if you do it very accurately, you, you're able to get that um, this is 0, 0.63. But you see, this 0, 0.63, I'm just going to mention, is 0, 0.63. But this 0, 0.63, if you do it very carefully here, 0, 0.78 minus 2 times that, you realize that it is actually... And just to just to show something more practical here than just just show with the calculator where these answers are coming from. So you'd say zero point seven eight minus two times zero point zero seven seven five. Okay, we don't. See, uh, 0 0.63, but you can see that it is actually 0 0.625. 0 0.625 uh, moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, which is um, which is rounded off to 0 0.63. So, but now you're going to come here and also here, the more accurate answer would be 0 0.625 times one, which is 0 0.63. But yeah, we have a rounded off result. So we want the mass, so, which means therefore, now we're gonna do the mass in it in red, it's the final answer. So we're interested in the mass. What is uh, this? Number of moles is mass over molar mass. Mass, hydrogen iodide. Okay, cross multiply here. Mass is hydrogen iodide, which is number of moles um, times um, times the molar mass. So, which means the mass of the hydrogen iodide is uh, the number of moles. We can use zero comma six three or zero comma six two five. And then we multiply by the molar mass. Okay, what is the molar mass of the 
A hydrogen iodide is the molar mass of a hydrogen. Okay, this one I'm going to write it is 1 to 8. Okay, from the periodic table, but it is the molar mass of hydrogen plus the molar mass of iodine. Okay, the, the, the total is, this is from the periodic table. I know you know that. So that in the end, then it's 1 to 8, and the, it is actually therefore, if you multiply 0, 0,63 by 1 to 8, what we're getting is 80. 0.64 grams. Okay, we have found the mass of the uh, hydrogen iodide. Any discussion that you can bring, anything else you can mention here. But now we've, because we, we have to calculate the mass of hydrogen iodide present at the new equilibrium in 850 Kelvin, we found it to be exactly 80,64 grams. Any question or any suggestion now? No questions. <laughs> okay, it's a, bit, it's a bit long. Okay, and, and boring. Let's look at the next question. Right, here's the next question. The next question is very, very nice and easy. And so now, if you look at this very, very carefully, it's an awesome, awesome question. I want us to look at the graphs and analyze the graphs. I mean, sometimes the examiners, they set graphs. This question we're looking at was set in November, November last year, November last year. Okay, it was said in November last year, uh, November 2023, and we're taking a look at it and seeing what the students had to do in last year's uh, November paper. Okay, now, question six. This question came from November 2023, um, chemistry paper. Consider the following hypothetical reaction um, reaching equilibrium in a four cubic decimeter closed container at 150 degrees Celsius temperature. And, and obviously it is a hypothetical, hypothetical reaction. What is it? Okay, so you have two moles of A, B gas, which break down and undergo dissociation into um, A2 gas plus B2 gas. And uh, all these are uh, actually guesses, and therefore this is a is, is a hypothetical reaction. Okay, these are in the gaseous gaseous state. Okay, right. The the graph below um shows the changes in the amount of reactants and products over time. Okay, so this shows the number of moles of the changes in the amounts. Of, okay, once the examiner uses the weight amount, so we're dealing with moles of reactants and products over time. You can see, therefore, that uh, here the moles decrease, here increase, etc., and here uh, they are constant, constant, etc., etc., and, and they, they, they fluctuate. Okay, good. Let's uh, answer the questions that they brought for the November 2023 students. Write down the meaning of the term reversible reaction. What kind of a reaction is reversible? One mark. This is what they asked in November last year. Write down the meaning of the term reversible reaction. What is a reversible reaction? A reaction were products can be okay. Okay, let's just analyze this one. So we are saying a reaction where products can be converted. Converted back. Okay, we it's talking back. Converted back to reactants. Okay, let us look at what this means. And, uh, and vice versa. Okay, analyze this with me. Okay, so we are saying, consider the following hypothetical reaction reaching equilibrium in a four cubic decimeter closed container at 150 degrees Celsius temperature. Write down the meaning of the term reversible reaction, a reaction where products can be converted back to reactants. So you have the products and the these can be converted back to reactants 
uh, this means that you have a reversible reaction because you can be able to convert the product back to reactants. Okay. State let's tell you this principle. Okay, let us write the statement of this one. It comes most of the time. Please, this one it's T box. You can be rest assured, always memorize it. Let's just write it again. And uh, when when the equilibrium, right, when the equilibrium in a closed system, in a closed system is disturbed, is disturbed, the system will reinstate will reinstate a new equilibrium will reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring by favoring the reaction that will cancel stroke oppose Oppose the disturbance. This is Le Chatelier's principle. Disturbance. When the equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, the system will reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring the reaction that will cancel or oppose the disturbance. Learn it and memorize it. Next question. Right. Now we have the information above. A change was made to the equilibrium mixture at T equals 80 um, seconds. So T is time in seconds. And now a change was made to the equilibrium mixture at this time of 80. At 80, a change was made. Okay, let us see what the examiner is saying. Write down the change. Write down the change made at t equals 80 um, seconds. What change was made at t equals 80 seconds? Right, so what are you able to see here in particular? Okay, the A, B, you can be able to see the A, B, which refer to the reactants. So you can see that the concentration of the reactants from at 80 seconds, uh, there is a sudden increase in the number of moles of the A, B, but also you're able to see that the number of moles of the A, 2 uh, decrease uh, just immediately after 80, but also of the B, 2 also decrease. So you can see that a2 and B2 decrease, so the products decrease um, when the reactants, um, the reactant uh, AB increase uh, happens to increase or increases. Okay, why? I, I write down the change because this I guess is this, and this is at the temperature of 150, um, uh, you know, degrees Celsius temperature. What? was the change that suddenly increased this uh, uh, sort of increased uh, this one and decreased that okay so there was a change that was conducted and it decreased a2 decreased b2 but increased a b increased a b the amount the amount stroke concentration of A2 was increased. Okay. 
So this is the response. Or you can say that, or you can say that at this point, A2 gas was added. Was added to the container. A2 gas was added to container. So in other words, the amount or concentration of um, A2 was increased. Okay, because now, if you look very, very carefully in six point, write down the change at this. What we are seeing is that suddenly the fact that the products themselves decrease in concentration and the AB increased in concentration is actually a clear sign that what happens is, according to Le Chatelier's principle, if you increase, if you make, if you disturb the equilibrium, um, what then the equilibrium does is to counter the change. So we're then saying the amount of concentration of A2 was increased. So if you attempt to increase the concentration of A2, the then according to the Chatelier's principle, this will tend to um, decrease that counter that increase. Okay, so we continue. We continue. We continue. We continue. Okay, so a change was made to the equilibrium mixture at t equals 80 uh, um, seconds. And once again, write down the change made at 80. At 80, once again, what are we seeing? We are seeing a sudden decrease in the, in the number of moles of the products. And that actually can be justified by saying the amount or concentration of A2 was increased because if it is increased, then... Um, Okay, or we can say A2 was added to the container because if it is added to the container, then suddenly what happens is that the A2 will then tend to decrease as the AB itself um, would then increase to establish a new equilibrium, to establish a new equilibrium there. Let's look at the next question. Okay, the next question says, use the Saturnius principle to explain how the system reacts to this change. Okay, this is the explanation. Use the Chatelier's principle to explain how the system reacts to this change. Right, so in 6.3.2, the first thing was going to say increase in A2. Increase in A2. A concentration favors. Concentration favors the reaction. That uses or decreases. Okay, we continue. Okay, when I look at what this, what I'm writing here, a decrease is uh, the amount. Okay, we're gonna analyze together what this means. The amount or sort of the concentration of A2. Right, so next uh, we can say the, the, the reverse reaction is favored. Uh, the reverse reaction, okay, um, is favored. Okay, let's uh, look at this one, please. Okay, so use the general principle to explain how the system reacts to this change. Now, increase in A2 or concentration favors the reaction 
that uses or decreases the amount of concentration of AT, the reverse reaction is favored. So in other words, you can see that suddenly we saw that AB increased and uh, there was A2A and uh, A2 and B2 went down. So increase in A2, a concentration favors the reaction that uses or decreases the amount of concentration of A2, the reverse reaction is favored. You can see the reverse reaction was favored because suddenly there was an increase in the, in, in the, in the reactant and therefore, this means that, uh, uh, obviously, an increase in A2 or concentration um, of A2 um, would um, favor the reaction that uses or decreases the amount of A2. And which reaction would decrease the amount of A2? It's the, um, it's the reverse reaction because uh, it actually uh, was increasing there. So we're able to see, therefore, that an increase in the amount of uh, number of moles of AB um, meant that uh, obviously the reverse was favored and uh, and that the reverse is favored if only we increase these guys. We increase the A2 and uh, it would favor the, the reverse because the reverse would then um, use the uh, the A2 up and sort of decrease it. Let's look at the next question quickly. I want to, I, I'm, I'm aware of the time. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's calculate the equilibrium constant Kc at 120 um, seconds. Right, so in 6.4, um, we already have the hypothetical, so, um, hypothetical reaction. So we have that our Kc is actually exactly A2, B2, you divide everything by AB squared. Okay, so now what then is the meaning of all these here? So I want to calculate the Kc at 120. Everything is, uh, is, is on the graph. Okay, so the graphs normally make life way, way too easy. But we remember that if we've been, we need to find the concentration of A2, okay, because we know that concentration is number of moles of a volume, okay, you can do concentration of A2. And then now we would do, okay, the, we can see that the the volume is this one. It's four, so that we have concentration is number of moles of volume. Okay, A2. Um, um at the temper at, at at time 120 seconds. Okay, 120 seconds. Let's read, let's read the moles. Um, like if we want to read the moles of A2, okay, because we want to put a deal with A2 here. So A2 is there. And the moles are exactly eight. Okay, the moles are eight. So we're going to do eight over four. Right, which is actually two moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, let's do the other thing. Uh, this one, concentration of B2. Number of moles in volume. What is number of moles? B2. You have uh, the number of moles, which is exactly two, two over four, zero comma five moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, we're gonna just substitute everything quickly. Yes, now, and then we're gonna do we go do another concentration of the AB. is number of moles on volume and, okay, let's look, deal with AB, but at 120 seconds, AB is this guy here and it's exactly 10. So you have 10 divided by the volume, four. And uh, therefore this one is like five over two, which is 2.5, um, 2.5 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, A2, A2 is 2. B2 is 0, 0,5. It's 1 half. And then AB is 2,5 is square. And therefore, we have the KC. It's actually that one. Let's just do the calculation together. Let's launch a calculator quickly. OK, I can see the time, please. Just, just cruising to get this. Um, 
So let's do this. So you have two times 0 0.5. You divide by the denominator, which is 2.5. And then you square it like this, 0 0.16. Okay, 0 0.16. So dimensionless, dimensionless, no units for the KC, but it is actually uh, exactly 0 0.16. And therefore, this should be the answer to this question. Let's look at the next point. Okay. Okay, now, um, at T equals 130 seconds, okay, T equals 130 seconds. Okay, this one is 120, and then 130 is going to be here. The temperature of the system is decreased to 100 um, degrees Celsius. Draw a potential energy diagram for this reaction. Okay, so for this reaction now, let us draw a potential energy diagram for this reaction. So if we're then saying um, it takes 130 uh, um, seconds, the temperature of the system is decreased. So if you decrease the temperature of the system, what then do we expect? So we really expect that uh, from grade 11, this is going to be sort of the graph there. Okay, let me just draw a clearer graph. Okay, from grade 11, this is sort of going to be, it's going to be the graph. Yeah. So, which means that the cause of reaction, cause of reaction, potential energy, potential energy, Okay, so now, because so this kind of a reaction is such that um, um, it's such that what we are able to see the potential energy of the products themselves um, versus the potential energy of the reactants. Um, right, so we were able to then see that in view of the fact that um, the potential energy of the of the products will therefore be sort of higher um, than the potential um, energy of the reactants, and this will sort of be the potential um, energy for this particular reaction. There, okay. For example, um, what then are you able to see because we are saying that the temperature is this is decreased to this. Right, so if it is decreased to that because it was initially 150 uh, degrees uh, Celsius there, but now if it is dropped to um, to 100 degrees Celsius, what we're then able to see that is the potential energy of the products is higher than the potential energy of the reactants. So the reactants will therefore have um, a less um, potential energy there. Okay, and so, this is actually um, what then becomes noticeable there. And you can actually obviously have, we'll have uh, more uh, elaborations um, on this particular um, note. Okay, I will elaborate more on this in a little, in, in a little bit, but this will sort of be uh, the potential energy diagram for this particular reaction there because uh, yeah the, there's more detail we're gonna uh, actually state but let us first look at 6.5.2 will there will the equilibrium kc at 100 degrees celsius be greater than less than or equal to the kc at 150. okay this is very important um what is going to happen to the kc right so let us look at 6.5.2. Right, so if you look at 6.5.2, we know that now we're looking at the case C. It will be less than. It will be less than the amount. Straw concentration. Concentration of products
B2, A2 decreases. Okay. Right, so now we are then saying, will there could be a constant Kc at 100 degree, uh, degrees Celsius be greater than, less than, or equal to the Kc at 150? Remember there was Kc at 150, then now there's Kc at 100 degrees Celsius. So it will be less than. It will certainly be less than. Right, so we are choosing less than. And uh, we obviously proceed to um, explain the answer. Um, the In our explanations, or this one would be, the less than would be one mark and this would be two marks and the marks would balance to three, but it will be less than why? Explain why it will be less than? Because the amount of concentration of products B2 and A2 decreases. Obviously, we are able to see that the concentration of the A2 and that decreases. Okay. And, and also, I mean, we're looking at T equals 130 seconds. A2 and B2 decrease. So the fact that the concentration of the B2 and the A2 decrease means that... um. If you decrease the temperature, also the, the, the products or the condition of the products decrease there. Okay, and, and also you're able to see that the condition of AP. So you can also say here, so, I mean, you can be able to guess if this reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Okay. Right, so you can be able to guess if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic because if the temperature is decreased at 130, the A2 and the B2 go down. Okay, so it means, therefore, you really can see that um, contrary to the fact that in the initial example we did where the Kc was 0 0.02 at 721, Kelvin temperature. Oh, I just want to just put this analogy here. Okay, and then now, okay, I'm finishing, please. And then the KC became 0 0.09 at 850 Kelvin temperature. Um, We actually were able to observe that when the temperature increased, the KC increased, and that meant that we actually, the forward direction was endothermic uh, because uh, it actually, uh, you know, I had the Kc increasing with uh, um, an increase in temperature. So now you're able to see that at this point, um, whenever the temperature itself um, was suddenly decreased, you can see therefore that the A2 and B2 go down and this means the amount of concentration of the products decreases. The amount of concentration of reactants Amount stroke concentration. Okay, I want to write something else. Just a sec. Okay, there are many ways to write this. So you can always say amount or concentration. Of reactants. Of reactants. Um, which is A, B, right, uh, increases. Amount of condition of the, um, okay, we can see that the A, B increases. And it means that um, the reactant increases when the products um, tend to decrease there. Okay, and also you can say that the, you can also say that the, the reverse reaction, the reverse reaction is favored. 
the reverse reaction is favored or the reverse reaction is favored. Why? Because the 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 the, 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 the reactant increases, or you can go on to say the equilibrium. The equilibrium position shifts to the left. To the left. <laughs> the equilibrium position shifts to the left. Okay, the, the the increase in the in the in the uh in the A B concentration means that the equilibrium position shifts to the left. Okay, I want to make a comment uh, before we uh, conclude our discussion here. Um, right. So, um, right, 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 right. Okay. Um, I'll just be with you now. Um, something that I want to make as a comment here, um, as part of our learning. Um, right. So, I want to mention some properties that you, you know, you would not, you, uh, you just need to remember from grade 11. So, I was looking at this potential energy diagram. This is enough to draw in the exam, but there's more that you can draw, you can uh, do from grade 11 because, for example, so this is the endothermic, endothermic energy diagram. Endothermic energy diagram. So if you have A plus B, C plus D. And then here we have what you call the transition step. Okay, I know that your yeah, transition step. Okay, so I will, okay, this would be. Let me use A, yeah, or as you wanted to use A, A and B as pro, uh, as reactants and then, but here we can use the reactants. The reactant is only one, you can just say AB. And the product A2 plus B2. Okay, this is the end, endothermic uh, potential energy diagram. Endothermic potential energy diagram. Okay, let's look at uh, a couple of things. I want to add, uh, uh, some information here. Okay, we will remember from grade 11, when we're still small, that this was the activation energy, and then this one here was the, okay, the, this one, let it call the activation energy. Okay, activation energy, I'm just, okay, <laughs> right, so the, is the endothermic potential energy diagram. Okay, it's like this. And then, um, okay, we make a little bit of an error here. And then here, what we put, we put the enthalpy change. Enthalpy. Enthal enthalpy change, which is like delta H. Okay, this is the enthalpy change. Okay, I know this is very untidy. Okay, this would be sort of the products uh, right, so it will sort of become the products and then the, uh, the reactants as well. The reactants, okay, reactants here and then the products there. Enthalpy change, so this would be our friend, delta H. And this becomes the reaction coordinates. Reaction coordinate, and then this becomes the energy. Okay. So, okay, there's something that uh, I want to mention here um, is something very important. Okay, I'm concluding our discussion, please. And therefore, 
the opposite becomes very very true when you are dealing with the um this is for the endothermic endothermic where you have that the concentration of the, the potential energy of the products uh, is certainly higher than the potential energy of the reactants. And then obviously with exothermic, it would be the opposite where um, the products will have less of the potential energy and the reactants will have a greater potential energy there. Okay, I want to see what else is there. Okay. Uh, okay. Now let's look at it quickly. We're finishing, please. I know time is is against us. Well, I'm just I just want to make one last comment here. Okay, this is the very last question. The, the the initial reaction, initial reaction now takes place in the presence of a catalyst at 150 degrees uh, Celsius. At 150 degrees Celsius, which is uh, here. There is a catalyst. Describe the change. Yeah, describe the changes that will be observed on the graph between t equals zero and t equals sixty. T equals zero and t equals sixty. Let us discuss this. I'm going to just discuss this quickly. Right. Something that is very important. The marks are three. So you would say in as your answer to six point six would refer to the changes or the gradients. Right. So you would note that the gradients of all three curves will be steeper will be steeper and reach the same the same um, equilibrium values um right equilibrium values gradients of all three curves will be steeper and reach the same equilibrium values so in other words, obviously we're saying the initial the, the the initial reaction now takes place in the presence of a catalyst at 150. Okay. So obviously it was uh, the you know the temperature was initially 150. Um but what has changed now is just that it is in the presence of a catalyst. So if a catalyst is added with just to describe the changes that will be observed on the graph between t equals zero and t equals 60, if a catalyst is added. Right, so we are saying that the gradients of all three curves will be steeper and reach the same equilibrium values. Okay, so now, why why is this? Because now the gradients will be steeper because it would mean that uh, the a catalyst, what does a catalyst do? It, it speeds up the reaction without taking part. So if it speeds it up, it means that the gradients will be steeper between this uh, zero and up to 60. So the gradients will be steeper. And then steeper. So in other words, uh, they would quickly equilibrium is going to be reached. We're going to reach the equilibrium quicker than without the catalyst. But yet they're going to reach the same equilibrium uh, values there. Okay, so this is sort of the difference when the catalyst is uh, is essentially added um, in this case. And this is the last question. This is the last question. Okay, this will be another exam paper. Okay, any comment now? I think that obviously this will be enough for today and then we will discuss, then we'll see what else uh, we need to discuss. Any question? No. Any question? No. Okay, I know you're tired, Mr. Pitt. Okay, um, you have seen these things and you need to rest, you need to relax a little bit. Okay, thanks for joining us now and we'll discuss on WhatsApp. Yeah, we'll have more plans to learn um, even before we meet next okay. weekend. Okay, but thanks, yeah. Thanks a lot, Neo. <laughs> Take a deep okay, breath. Yeah, you. okay, thanks. Drink water and... Bye. Okay, thanks. Bye, Neo. <laughs>